Hey guys, for those of you following me on Instagram, you've probably figured out by now that I am on a secondhand store cast iron kick. Yeah, I picked up this little ditty for three bucks at my local Goodwill yesterday. It is a Birmingham stove and range, and you'll notice this is completely raw. There is no seasoning on it whatsoever. It is a clean slate. So we're gonna clean it, season it, and restore it. But before that, the day before, I had picked up another BSR number five, a slightly larger skillet. It was very dull inside and had several rust spots. Nothing too super significant, maybe no more collectively than the size of my thumbnail, but they were rust spots nonetheless and they needed to be dealt with. So I posted before and after pictures of this skillet and I got so many responses, where's the video if it was really that quick and easy? So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you what I did to um, treat and restore that cast iron skillet and then we're gonna come back and we're going to breathe new life into this little baby. Let's go. So the first thing we're doing is we are melting some butter in here. Use butter. Do not use country crock or any of that other crud because it's not butter, it's not natural, and it's not good for you. Good old fashioned butter. We're gonna get that heated up really nice, swirl it around, and just let that melt. So we're taking an onion, regular old onion will do. I like sweet onions and we're gonna saute them in the skillet with the butter and the little rust spots. Now, why are we doing this? Well, onions have this magical property. Um, the enzymes in the onion actually convert the amino acids into sulfenic acid and that acid actually eats away at rust. So not only is it going to dissolve the rust in the pan here, but if you've got rust spots on your knife, say you can simply rub an onion over those rust spots and it will help eat those rust spots out of your blade um, depending on the severity of the rust of course so now what's also interesting is um, these sulfenic acids are uh, become very unstable and when they become unstable they rearrange themselves and once they become airborne that is what comes in contact with our eyes and makes us cry when we're cutting onions so let's get these suckers in the pan all right so we're just going to get these babies into the skillet with the butter and the rust and we're just going to let them cook down and caramelize so we'll check back in this in just a few minutes all right and look at that we have perfectly caramelized onions and no rust as always be sure to protect your skin I'm using silicone, that seems to work well for me with cast iron, but these are very hot. So we're gonna let this cool before we clean it and finish it up. All right, our skillet is now cool enough to safely clean. So now you never want to use soap on seasoned cast iron. Just in case you didn't know that, never, ever, ever use soap. You're not only gonna strip the seasoning, but you're gonna get soap in the pores of that cast iron and you're gonna taste that soap forever. It ruins cast iron never use soap now if you've got cooked on substances you can use a scraper we even have some heavy duty ones that gets underneath but um we've got nothing in here but smooth rustless beautiful iron so i'm just going to use this little cloth and we've got one nice rust-free clean skillet let's get it drying all right, as you can probably see, I've got a couple other things going on the stove here at this point because I'm making some turkey tetrazzini for dinner. Um, yum. So that's sauteed um, mushrooms and onions, chopped turkey from the turkey we cooked the other day, some pasta and a white sauce. Right now what we're doing, you can see the flame under here, we are letting this water cook off. So we want to completely evaporate any water off of the skillet. So that's just gonna take a minute. And then we're going to put a quick layer of oil on there just to add a nice little layer of seasoning. All right, so we have cooked out all of the moisture out of the skillet, evaporated all the water so it's nice and dry. The last thing we wanna do is get a nice 
light layer of a neutral oil on there to coat it. So I prefer canola oil. I just put a little bit on a paper towel. Light layer, and since we're doing the inside, make sure we get the edges. Down and around. And we're just gonna let it sit here on this burner. Once the handle is completely cool, I'm going to, well, might as well just do it now, right? And look at that beauty. Look at those swirls in there. That is a really nice piece of cast iron. All right, so that's what I have for you this evening. When we found this skillet, it was dull and had a couple rust spots in it that needed to be tended to. And all we did was we uh, melted some butter, sauteed an onion in it, and it pulled those rust spots right out and gave us this beautiful, swirly, shiny, piece of cast iron that is going to love me and last me probably for the rest of my life. Now, how did I know that was going to work? Last summer I went outside and to my horror, I found an entire cast iron Dutch oven that had been left outside over the winter in the elements, rusted inside out, top and bottom, the lid, everything. So somebody on one of the forms that I hopped on said, um, saute some onions in it. So I did. And you know what? The rust disappeared. So that's how I knew this was going to work. I did some research after that um, to figure out why it worked so I could maybe better explain it to people in the future. So now we have that and join me um, next time when we take that sweet little ditty that I found that is raw and we are going to clean it, season it, and give it a whole new life. Until then, if you have any questions or comments about tonight's video, please head on over to the comment section of this video and drop them there. I'm happy to answer any questions. And while you're there, head on up to the like and subscribe buttons, hit those and ring that notification bell so you never miss another episode. As always, you can find everything at bushcraftdiva.com as well. And if you're not following me on Instagram yet, you better head on over there. I'm at bushcraftdiva and we will catch you next time. Have a great evening.